we just say this? That the Port Shop Stewards Committee do not recognise the Industrial Relations Court. We will never recognise it. And the National Shop Stewards Committee passed a resolution saying that if any worker in this country was touched as a result of the Industrial Relations Act, we would stop and give full support to a man. Yeah, the company we work, we work for, Tommy Wallace, in, employs at the moment somewhere in the region of 600 to 700 dock registered workers in a royal group of docks. And so far as we know, whilst operating this depot, he in the future is looking to reduce our company by something to the tune of 200 men, which means in effect that 200 men will be made redundant by being put on the pool and drawing 20 pounds a week. Meanwhile, the money we have earned is being ploughed hand over foot into places like these and employing cheaper labour and unregistered labour. And this gets back to the point of why we're picketing. Rationalisation in our particular industry has meant that where they've had to work inside the enclosed docks, custom and practice for over 100 years, ever since ships come to London, that they're now able to open up virtually on any bomb site because of the container revolution. They've brought in uh, people outside of our industry who have not got the tremendous history of struggle that we've had in gaining certain conditions and gaining certain safeguards. But basically, you can bet that their manning is a lot less than ours, and that uh, they've got no real strength like we've got when it comes to the organisation in the trade union movement. And we believe that the way it's been handled in our industry is an example of employers' greed. And therefore, we have fought this uh, particular attack by the employers, and we, we would continue to fight it. No one's opposed to the technological revolution. It's how it's implemented that we differ. And if we was to get the gains of any technological advancement, what it would mean is certainly not the sack. What it would mean is better conditions all around in your industry with shorter working hours and everything else. And uh, therefore, when people come out with these words of rationalisation, it's just another word for profit and unemployment. We're not the only industry, obviously, to suffer from this. All the major industries in our country have suffered from it because this is the new way forward. This is the way the employers see it. We've had the reductions in number of men employed in steel, the mines, and therefore, you know, the trade unions should recognise that this is not a problem so much to be dealt with within an industry. This is a concerted attack by the employers, by the capitalist system, on our way of work, and as such should be resisted by the whole of the trade union movement. It's a far-reaching policy because the more men attack this severance, our numbers are being depleted every single day. We're getting smaller and smaller as a unit. And this is what we don't want to see. We're selling jobs. Job on farm is ours. Everybody has lost sight of one main thing. The work in there is not work. The employers, Tom Wallace, Cunard, we're naming it now, the owners of it. Wallace, port employer. Cunard, port user. Gracechurch Shipping Line, port user. Lambert Brothers, forwarding agents, port users. Brown Jenkinsons, forwarding agents, port users. And port user is exactly what they are, because they think they've used us. And when we've done job on farm, we are going for the next one and so on and so on. So we tell you, keep up the picketing. Donald Simpson gets stuck. Anyway, lads, this is the picketing rotor for this week for our ship. Tomorrow morning, 
we would ask Kela and Desha. Thursday, Cole, Frio. Friday, White, Reader and Axter to be a Chelton Park. Are there any employers that Lord Vesti? He owns the land in Australia. He owns the cattle. He owns the slaughterhouses. He owns the coal stores in Australia. He owns the lorries that transport the stuff from the abattoirs to the ships. He owns the ships. Right? He fetches it here. He's got his own Stevie Doring company, Thames Stevie Doring, 1965 is his. He takes the meat from there on his own lorries, practically to Smithfield Market, where they all go in Weddell shops, which is Lord Vesty. He sells the meat to butchers. And if he doesn't sell it to butchers, it goes to Dewar shops, which is Lord Vesty, and they sell it to the housewife. This is what is left of the original new fresh wolf, owned by Lord Vesty, who now owns the Midland Coal Storage Company in Acme. The only reason that Vesty will close this building up, or has closed this building up, is to move out of the dock area to employ labour that is cheaper, that is unorganised and less militant than dock workers, and the other reason, to sell the property and to sell the land. The reasons given at the time was that the dockers, through uh, industrial action, had driven the work out of the port. It has now become clear that all during the time these charges of industrial unrest, the tongue was part of secret negotiations to sell this piece of land for, as an hotel development. It's been sold for £21 million pounds while these wolves were active. This sector employed approximately 2,000 registered dock workers. These are the reasons we pick it. We are not adamant on putting fellow tribunists out of work. The only reasons we pick it is to defend our own jobs. We instituted a, uh, a nine-point policy last year, National Shop Stewards. We went to dock gate meetings, put it to the men. The men accepted our, our points. And as such, a campaign was then led to regain the work that had been lost to us, to bring all unregistered ports inside the docks into the scheme, because these unregistered ports are a sore problem in relation to our industry, to bring them inside the scheme, to bring the unregistered container depots inside, uh, to bring back that work which is ours, and we organise a policy of blacking and so forth to bring this about. And we feel that only a campaign organised, uh, the trade unions should certainly organise a campaign once more to bring this work back to us. They should also now take action against the ship owners who are using Britain's port as a, as a railway station, playing one port up against the other. They're using docks, men against men. And besides the unregistered depots, these ship owners must be told that uh, they can't play one man, uh, one dock off against another, pull out and create unemployment. And uh, they should be told quite clearly that they'll get unloaded where the trade unions see fit to where they should be unloaded and not please themselves and create havoc with it. And we still will be working to bring these ports into the scheme. We can only hope that the trade unions take a far stronger line of action if we are to be successful in our demands. This attack is on every industrial worker in the country, whether he's organised or unorganised. And the people outside of the trade union movement better get the message because it's going to come home to them very, very shortly. <laughs> Just down the lane, there's a big police mobile unit set up there, so they know exactly who's on the bus, what's on the bus, the number of the bus, they know everything about it. We approach the police pickets at the police line up. They let everyone else through, and anybody who looks like a docker's car, or in our case, the docker's coach, wave it in. Same procedure, everybody off, search the coach, lift the seats, search the boats. The police go right through the clothing, frisk them all the way down. What do you think of the car? Yeah, you're here, man. And this is how it is all the time. We're just stopping and harassing all the time. The lads get out and put their hands up on the side of the bus, you know, like they do in Ireland.
The challenge is there. Industrial relations, acts, civil courts, the police, the judiciary, they're all there lined up against the working class people in order to lower their standards. Our only weapon is our unity. Our only weapon is our strength. If we unite and use that strength in order to oppose the laws in the same ways that our predecessors did, then, apart from bringing about a trade union movement, we will be able to secure its future in order to advance the standard of living of the working class people in this country. We're asking every of you, one of you express press, to come down here, join this picket line, because these are the workers from the other chapels now joining us. The NGA, the Soka and Nat Sopas, united tonight and closing down every paper because every one of these papers is supporting the Industrial Relations Act. The Times is closed for the night. The mail is beating right now and it looks as though that's going to close for the night. But let's make sure right now that these five in Nick are full out of Nick. There's only one key that turns that Pentonville door, and that's the mass action of workers. Yeah. You stand by your own class. Yeah. And if your leaders are not acting and corresponding to your wishes, we'll sack them at all. You are the union. Come out. Show your will in the night. The Soka lads are pulling their lollies out. Let's see everyone pull them out. This is what it's all about. Every chapel, the bell, the sun, the telegraph, express and all stuff it.
this is what we fought for for hundreds of years. Yeah, yeah. And that's the right of the working man. For every side that firmly determined his destiny. The five of us was put in by a political call. And it was the trade union movement that got us out. Yeah. And let me say that. Because we don't think there should be too much said at this moment. Because we're so overwhelmed with the support we've got from you. Because without you, we would have rotted in there. I make no mistake about yeah. that. I know we've been in there for a few days, but we've not had a terrible lot of sleep, you know, with all this singing going on out here. <laughs> But uh, you can imagine what that you can imagine what that done to us inside. You know what I mean? Yeah. In those little Peters, hear that singing out here is marvellous. Fellow workers singing for us in there, really great. Thank you all very much, all fellow workers and trade unions from the top of Scotland right down to the bottom of Cornwall and across back again. Thanks very much for all your support. I can't say any more, but. <laughs> Can't say much, you know. All that's already been said is just thanks to everybody who supported us. Okay, Dad? Thank you. The people we represent we're in contact hourly and daily with, and we have their um, view immediately, and we activate it to the best of our ability, whereas the paid official. Um, the time he gets hold of a dispute at the high level, the negotiating level, they they tend to become part of the establishment today. We we've seen it with the rail and dispute. Concerning. We've seen it with our own dispute in the docks, yeah. where they postponed the strike. And we see this bill now as an attack <coughs> not on paid officials, but on. The only democratically elected people, that is, the shop stewards. They are out to attack the shop stewards movement. It showed it was a sharp contrast to our policy as to that as a TUC and Big Fellas policy. One of cooperation yeah. against one of standing up and fighting. And yeah. it was seen quite clearly that the yeah, TUC, the every time they retreated and cooperated with the Act, then the act becomes stronger. The demands of Donaldson become stronger. It was only when we stood up and fought, and we did fight, we said absolutely straight that you ain't on, that they found the Ministry of Silly Laws. I think if you're going to draw comparisons and lessons, the only lessons perhaps you can draw are the lessons that no one, certainly not the establishment, is going to take any workers on when that class is absolutely united and backed up by other people. And, so, and I think on our question, without any doubt, what it's done is exposes a purely political call. I view it that these people, they're not finished, they're still on the book, that these people are vicious people, in my view anyway, that they'd be like a wounded animal now. They've retreated into a corner, they've had three good wallops, and now they're going to start slashing out. You know, influence a lot of men, particularly on severance, where the gamble was of Jones, get the men back to work as soon as he possibly could and to take the steam out of the kettle, if you like, by getting enough men to take the severance payments. Uh, he also was assisted in this to a great extent by the mass media, by the television, who uh, kidded, you know, fooled our men into believing they were getting a lot out of the Jones Audit report when in fact they were getting nothing at all. But he was also swayed by the fact that the recall delegates conference of the Transport and General Workers Union is completely undemocratic, where small ports like Leaf, Padstow in Cornwall have uh, one delegate for 100 men, where massive sectors like the Royal Group with 5,000 men have only got two delegates, three delegates. We've got this tremendous struggle by the employing class for the survival of their profits, and that means they're going to intensify the struggle against the working class in order to maintain their profits. Anybody that advocates going along with the law as a kind of a tactic and wait for a general election so that the next government can repeal it is just ignoring history. Because the law that we've got today is a reflection of all the governments that we've ever had in the past. Every government that we've ever had in Britain has been a government which has tried to handcuff the working class in one way or the other. It happens to be a Tory government this time. The last one was a Labour government who laid the blueprint for it. And unless we can return to the masses, to the, the workshop floor, that the workers themselves who are working there every day of the week, clocking on, clocking off, 
getting a pittance for the work that they do for the employers, unless we can get that in our own head, that we can fight this battle and win, then we'll lose. We, united, not only can frustrate this challenge, but can fight back in a way that will not only repeal all the laws they've introduced, but also ends once and for all the capitalist system that creates all the problems that we are daily in conflict with. We want to see a society where working people themselves are able to develop to the full their own talents that capitalism for years has depressed. In the ultimate, the workers will run their own destinies. And I, I would say that the first thing that we've got to do is to make sure that we keep the British trade union movement free. We've got to keep that free in order that we can extend and mobilise it to fight against these uh, attacks that are going to be made against us.